Link free has gone down again. In this video, I want to talk to you about the recent hosting challenges I've had for the open source project Linkfree and how after a lot of research and collaboration with the community, with you, I think we've resolved them. I will include the cost of hosting before, during, after to give you a better idea and understanding. So how do all great projects start? You get an app idea, you build it. But no matter how amazing it is, you need to host it on the internet for the world to see and to use. Sounds simple, right? But I found it to be the hardest and most time consuming part. What about you going from idea to user? What is the part that is the most challenging for you? I've been with DigitalOcean for over 10 years. So I hosted Linkfree on DigitalOcean. That story itself is quite long, jumping between various different services they've offered, but I will keep it short for you. So we can get into the recent exciting events, well, more stressful events, including multiple all-nighters. Just to clarify, I haven't had any issues with DigitalOcean in the past using their virtual machines. Linkfree started out being hosted on a virtual machine, I think like most projects do, but I wanted it to be more manageable, more scalable, more robust, more resilient. So I asked people on Twitter you know, what they recommended and platforms like Vercel and Kubernetes and other technologies and platforms were recommended. Kubernetes seemed to be a bit too much for a static app built in React at the time, it was just React, but we had bigger plans for Linkfree. I thought this would be a good solution. I did a live stream with Sid, big shout Shout out to Sid, the YouTube channel is awesome, who got us up and running on a managed Kubernetes solution on DigitalOcean. It was a bit more expensive, went from my $10 VM to $30 per month, but I could see the scalability, so I was really, really happy. We then added Next.js and Mongo to show people their profile stats. This is one of the most requested features at the time. And adding Next.js, all we had to do was update the Docker container, and Kubernetes just worked out of the box with its capacity. We did have to add an environment variable to reach the uh, managed uh, database on DigitalOcean. And price wasn't affected. And like I said, we used the managed Mongo database on DigitalOcean. So that was really easy to get started. And it costs only $15 a month for their kind of entry package. So now we've jumped to about $45 in total a month. But by this stage, we're not only hosting Linkfree, but all of EddieHub apps like EddieBot for our Discord server. So actually, I thought it wasn't a bad price, especially as we had capacity to host more apps and we could scale further if we needed to quite easily. Fast forward a few months, DigitalOcean did a Kubernetes upgrade that broke our Kubernetes setup and config, causing Linkfree to go down and EddieBot and all the other apps we hosted on there. So this is the first time everything went down. We built this setup with Kubernetes config, but also a lot of click and pointing on the DigitalOcean control panel. So after trying to figure out why it was no longer working, we needed a short term solution. As a quick solution, as I didn't want our apps to be down for very long, I thought I would try out DigitalOcean apps. And it worked as described, easily, quickly, our apps were up and running. But it got more expensive because I needed to pay per app and per container per app. I think the hosting now has jumped to nearly $100 per month with much less power and capacity. But we were happy as it was all working again. Having learned from David Flanagan that we could script the entire Kubernetes infrastructure setup with JavaScript and host it on Sivo or DigitalOcean or anywhere else, David joined me on the live stream and many Discord calls afterwards, so thank you so much. And we started to move the EddieHub projects, including Linkfree, to Kubernetes on Sivo. But it wasn't finished. And why Sivo? Well, they had an amazing and supportive community. The speed of creating Kubernetes clusters was epic. So during a live stream, we could destroy them and create them and it would always just work really fast. And their pricing was super affordable. So super shout out to Sivo. We spent many hours on this and as usual, it always takes a lot longer. As we were looking to the future for centralized logging, community access to help with going through logs and managing servers and infrastructure and so on, we kept on adding more and more technologies to this and we never actually quite finished it. As we never actually got to complete the deployment to Sivo. In the meantime, Linkfree got more popular and traffic increased, which is a great thing. So a big shout out to the community for helping support Linkfree and its growth. But we had to scale up DigitalOcean apps specifically for Linkfree. People in the community like Krish, 
had suggested moving to Vassell and Naomi had suggested moving to Mongo Atlas. Others also agreed and a few more people suggested some other platforms as well. When Link3 was announced as being accepted into the GitHub Accelerator program, traffic went even higher and the app actually stopped responding. After some research, it looked like the database was fine, but the app of two pro containers in DigitalOcean of $24 a month definitely wasn't enough. And we actually scaled up to $150 per container for Link3 alone. And we had two containers running, so that's actually a total of $300 for hosting Link3 hosting, not including the database. Then within a few days, the app went down again, but this time it wasn't because of extra traffic. The traffic actually had tailed off a little bit. It was because of the automated upgrade of DigitalOcean's managed Mongo. The connection string needed an extra flag in it, and that took me all night to figure out what was wrong. It's actually quite hard to debug these managed solutions. And remember, DigitalOcean apps was only meant to be a short-term solution, but like everyone always says, short-term solutions become long-term solutions. Then I'm thinking, hopefully this will be fine for the next few months so I can catch up on GitHub notifications, do some pull requests myself because there are features that I want to add that you're all requesting. But what do you think happened next? Another all-nighter was required to debug why it was down again. Yes, within a few days, this $300 app was down again and it wasn't because of extra traffic. It seemed like the Mongo connection string with the extra parameter that we added, the environment variable was reset to the previous version somehow. And then it happened again a few days later. It was the first thing I tried updating it was the connection string to fix it again. So at least it didn't take me an all-night to figure it out. However, I wasn't very happy. This stress was not good for my mental health, but also would be super frustrating to our users. And I think we did lose some of our users. We're around 2K at the moment, but I think some users left. Hopefully we can win them back on our latest setup, which I'll get to, to shortly. But can you guess what happened next? Like clockwork, over the last kind of one to two weeks, two days later, it happened again. But actually, this time, my quick fix of updating the Mongo string and the environment variable for the DigitalOcean app didn't fix it. So I reached out on Eddie Hub's Discord and said, let's move to Atlas and Vercel right now. Can anyone pair with me just to make sure I don't make any mistakes, I don't lose any data, and have the minimal amount of downtime? I got so many responses from all you awesome people, from people like Dean, Praduma, and Dan. But remember, everyone lives in different time zones, so responses ranged from, yes, absolutely, but when I wake up, so I'm going to bed now, or I'm currently at work, it's gonna be when I finish my work, so completely understand. But I was super grateful for everyone's support. They were really, really supportive. So even before I had breakfast or a coffee, yes, I wouldn't recommend this, but Link3 was down again and I was really, really upset. So I created an M10 Mongo database on Atlas for $57 per month. This was probably way overkill for what we needed. It definitely was way overkill but it seemed super powerful and was only $57 per month. And when I add everything up coming up in a minute, it will still be cheaper than what we had, but had a lot more power for any kind of burst of traffic. I also had the option to scale up and I actually enabled the option to scale up to M20 if needed, and then it will scale back down when it's not needed. I also created an account on Vercel, which gave me two weeks pro free trial, but straight away upgraded to the pro version, which cost me $20. Then by adding the GitHub URL to our repo of Link3 to the project, Vercel deployed the app rapidly under a minute and also gave me a temporary URL. Wow, that was easy and fast. So I jumped on a call with Dean and we first migrated the database. That was pretty straightforward. We used Mongo Compass to manually do each collection at a time. And we only have about eight collections and then nothing was too big. I think the biggest one had almost 100,000 records. So the whole thing only took about 30 minutes to export and import via my laptop. I couldn't do the import on Atlas. For some reason, it wasn't connecting to the digital oceans database, even using the cert and all the rest. So just to save time, get the app up, I did it locally via my laptop. But it did look like Atlas had a great import setting, but I couldn't get it to work with DigitalOcean. What gave me confidence was pairing with someone. So I didn't make any mistakes. 
Uh, some mistakes are easily fixed, and we're all humans, so we all make mistakes. And some other mistakes like DNS could take a lot longer to fix and could take up to 48 hours to propagate. We then updated the app on Vercel with the new environment variables. It worked out of the box. I was super happy. But next, we need to make some decisions about how we were going to do DNS. It needed to be fast, so name servers are a lot slower, as Dean advised me, but also there were other apps on subdomains as well we needed to think about. When adding a domain to Vercel, it gave us various options on how to make it work with instructions. We made the various DNS changes and waited a few minutes, hoping to see some positive results. Dean was checking on the command line, we have cache disabled, and I was in various browsers refreshing like crazy. These few minutes seemed like a lifetime. I really wanted Linkfree to come back up. But then it appeared. It worked on the command line first, and then in the browser, it was working. Linkfree was back online, and I could delete the $300 Linkfree app on DigitalOcean. I still need to keep the current database on DigitalOcean for the other Eddie Hub apps that are using it, but I will move them to Atlas very soon, especially with the amazing M10 capacity that we have. This whole process took about three hours. So, another big shout out to Dean for taking three hours out of your day after working to support me on this. I really, really appreciate it. Of course, I had to take a screenshot of this epic moment of migrating Linkfree to the new infrastructure and share it on socials. So the app is back up and running, but there was still more work to do. I took a break, I had breakfast, had a coffee before continuing. Vercel and GitHub integration by default deploys every change in the main branch and comments on the pull requests. It has lots of great features like that, lots of great magic and integration, which I think is brilliant for most projects. But because we use a version number and we use that version number to create the Docker container, to create a GitHub release, we needed to deploy to Vercel via a GitHub action and Vercel had great docs. And I was able to turn off the magic deployment and move to their GitHub action deployment which worked excellent. So now our deployments happen after a GitHub action and after all our other GitHub actions have run. And now the version numbers match across the releases, the containers, and what's displayed on the Linkfree website. I also enabled a few add-ons on Vercel. So I think now Vercel is costing us $30 per month. I will let you know next month for sure after I receive my first bill. The total so far with Mongo Atlas database, they'll be used for all the Eddie Hub projects and more. We're about $100 per month with Vercel as well. But we have a lot more power, a lot more features, and a lot more stability. I'm recording this video 24 hours later after the migration, all is still looking great, and we've got loads of capacity to grow. But there are more features that we could use on Atlas and Vercel that we could probably improve on the, the feedback, so the reporting, the monitoring. Also, the security is super important. So we're actually arranging a community call to go through the admin dashboards on both those platforms to get ideas, tips, and feedback back from people who have been using these platforms for much longer and probably raise some issues on the repo so you can get some green squares and then we can uh, enable, disable and tweak those features. Plus, hopefully create a role for some people within EddieHub to help manage with the infrastructure on these platforms. Will we move to Kubernetes in the future? Who knows? I want to focus on helping more people contribute to the link-free open source project because we're using Next.js, Mongo, Tailwind, lots of great technologies. And we're thinking of doing link-free office hours. So do watch this space. We will add it to our Discord event so you can come and join and ask questions. And therefore, you can contribute to the project and challenge your skills, maybe pick more challenging issues, and we can help you with that. I want to add more features to link-free myself also as well. So that's definitely going to keep me busy. I do have a few draft open pull requests. Big shout out to everyone who has helped me along with this journey. There are too many to list here, but I'll try to add some people's link-free profiles in the description description below. I couldn't have done this without you. Let me know what you think of this journey so far. Would you have done something differently? While you're down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And have you joined the most inclusive open source community, Eddie Hub? Do you have a link-free profile? Come and geek out with us in Eddie Hub. Link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you there.